When you call a function, the JavaScript engine jumps into the function and executes each of the steps defined inside its curly braces until it gets to the end or gets to the return statement. A function can have more than one return statement. For example, you might create a function that checks if a form field is not empty. In this case, the function could return either true or false. The function might check the field, then return just the value true if the form field has been filled out by a user and is not empty, or it could return false if the user did not enter anything. You can then use that return value to perform another action, like a display an error message or disable the submit button to prevent the form from being submitted. Let me show you one practical example. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Functions. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, remember to link multiplevalue.js file. In multiplevalue.js file, I'll start by creating a function named is empty. This function will check if an input field for collecting a user's full name is empty or not. In index.html, there is an input element inside the main tags that's commented out. For this example, uncomment these two lines so that we are able to interact with it using JavaScript. The input element's ID attribute is set to full name, so we can select this element with JavaScript using this ID. I'll save index.html and back in the multiple value.js file. I'll first access the input element inside the function and store it in a variable called name field like this. And I'll pass the document.query selector the string hash symbol full name. So this code accesses an element on the web page with an ID of full name and stores a reference to that element in a variable name field. Once I have the name field, I can check the value of it using a conditional statement. I'll start with this condition checks the value of the name field. In this case, I'm checking if the value is equal to an empty string. In other words, is the name field empty? If the name field is empty, then the function returns true. I can also add an else clause to return a different value. So now the function has two return statements. But remember that a conditional statement only executes one option. That means this function not going to return both true and false. It will only ever run one of these return statements either true if the name field is empty or false if it has something in it. I'll finish the programming for this by creating a variable named isFieldEmpty to hold the return value from the function, either true or false. Then use a conditional statement to see if the name field is empty or not like this. If isFieldEmpty strictly equal to true. If it's empty, I can, for example, display a warning message in the console. I can test this by going back to my index.html file and adding a value attribute to the input element. I'll set the value of the input field to I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. And there's no message in the console. That's expected because the input field is not empty. It has a value. However, if I remove the value attribute from the input element, I'll save the chains. Refresh the page.
Now it's an empty field, so the message, the name field is required, displays in the console. We can also simplify each condition. You know that all conditions evaluate to either true or false. The test condition produces a Boolean value. So we don't need to use the strict equality operator in our conditions. For example, we can check if the value of the name field is empty using the logical not operator like this. This checks if the field does not have a value. Also, since the value of is field empty is either true or false, we can check its value like this. If is field empty is true, the message the name field is required will display in the console. If it's false, nothing will happen. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. And everything works just as before. Good. Finally, there are a few details to remember about the JavaScript return statement. When a return statement runs, it causes the JavaScript engine to exit the function immediately. In other words, the return statement should be the last line of code you want to run in a function. Now, let's see it in practice. In the console, I'll create a function called testMe. And return number 10. After the return statement, I'll also add one alert statement with the message, I'll not be executed. So now if I call this function, the JavaScript engine jumps into the function and executes its steps until it gets to the return statement. When the return statement is encountered, the function returns the number 10 and any other codes after the return statement will never run because the JavaScript engine will exit from this function after the execution of this return statement. I'll press enter. As you can see, we can only see the number 10 returned from the function, but there's no alert dialog. That means this line of code was not executed. In addition, the return statement can only return a single value. That is, you can only return one thing, a string, a number, a Boolean value, or the contents of a variable. In other words, you can't return multiple items at once.